Hi, welcome back to the Power BI Custom Visuals course, and in this module we're going to be looking at the drill down cartogram. Now the cartogram is similar to some maps we've looked at recently in that it does require you to have a shape file. So we need to have a shape file to be able to use this map. Uh, it, says, it says here you can add your own shape file, but it actually requires that you bring in your own shape file to be able to actually use this map. As opposed to the previous map that we looked at that actually outlined and highlighted a shape, this one will actually place a circle or kind of a dot on your map to indicate a, a set of values. And the size of that dot or the size of that circle and the color of that circle is specified by the values that you pass into the visual. It does also support drill down capabilities. So if you want to drill down through a hierarchy, a geographical hierarchy that you have, then you can use this visual to be able to drill down into your hierarchy. So again, if I have data at the state, the county, and maybe the voting precinct level, I can drill into each of those levels until I get down to the lowest level of my data. Again, you add in your own shape files. It's going to be one of the first things you do after you add in your data to the visual is to actually define the shape file that you have. In my case, I have a couple that you can copy from me, but you can also go find your own from the web, or you might even design your own for your own purpose as well. This visual is designed by Microsoft, so let's go ahead and take a look now at how to go find the drill down cartogram and then how to use it. All right, so normally what we've done in the past is you would go to the Office Store, go to store.office.com, and from the Office Store, you would go underneath Power BI, and you could go search through all the visuals that they have available to, for you down here at the bottom where it says See More Apps. And you can scroll down until you find the drill down cartogram here. You could also search for it up on the top. That's a couple ways you can find it. When you find it, you select it. And you would go ahead and select to add it. And then you can choose to download the visual here. But you could also download a sample, which is nice because they give you some samples of how this visual can be used. I think there's a couple samples in there. Now, the nice thing is uh, recently, Microsoft has made it where you don't have to go to this website to be able to add in custom visuals. If we were just to go to the Power BI desktop application, you would see there's a section here devoted to custom visuals, and I can select to bring in from the store. If I had downloaded it from the store website, I would bring in from file. But uh, I'm going to select to bring in from the store, and I would search for the cartogram here once it launches. And I can just do a little search up here in the top left and search for the cartogram. I can even abbreviate there. Oh, well, maybe I can't. I thought I could make a little shorthand there. But if I typed in cartogram, there we go. It'll actually bring up two visuals. The reason why it brings up two visuals is because the, the same description is shared between the two of them, and it actually mentions the name cartogram and the other one here as well. So we're focused on the cartogram here, though. So we're going to go ahead and select the drill down cartogram, and we're going to add that to our Power BI desktop. You'll see after a moment or two, it'll actually add that to our visualization section over here, and you can hit OK to tell it that it uh, imported successfully. And then once we have some data, we'll actually be able to use this. Now, we're actually going to use the same data set this time that we did in our previous video, which is all about uh, military veterans. And so we're going to go up to the Get Data section here, and we're going to bring in some data from an Excel workbook. And the workbook that we're going to be bringing in is called Military Veterans. And we'll hit Open. And then we're going to choose the spreadsheet here called Veterans by County. And we'll select to load that into our data set. Now, I didn't really show you the data there, but it's similar to what we've done in a previous example. Basically, it has a list of states, counties, and the number of veterans for each county. Now, don't get too hung up on the data. If you happen to know this data well, don't get too hung up on the data. It's more the idea of this visual that we're focused on. So uh, what we want to do is I'm actually going to create a couple calculations before we get started with this. And I have these calculations in this little notepad here. I'm going to drag over right here. We'll actually need these two top items here as well in a few moments. But the first thing we're focused on is we're going to create some, uh, some basic calculations, one here that has the total number of veterans, and then the one that the next one here has a percent of veterans in the in for each county here or each state. So we're going to start here by selecting the total veterans calculation. And I'm going to copy and paste this. It's basically a, a simple sum on the number of veterans. So I'm going to come over to my table we have in the field list, right click on it and create a new measure. And I'm going to paste in this calculation I have here that's going to create a sum of the veterans, which is going to bring back a calculation called total veterans. Now, the real reason why I needed this calculation is to build on for the second calculation. Again, the second calculation is bringing back the veterans percent, a percent of veterans, which means it's going to bring back the veterans for one county or one state and then divide that by all the veterans. So I'm going to copy this out and we're going to go ahead and bring in and create another new measure. I'll paste this in. This should give us our veterans percent or percentage. And we might want to format that as a percent. Really doesn't matter for what we're doing in here, but we could come over to the modeling ribbon and we can format this one as a percent by simply selecting the percentage sign here. All right, so we've got that set up. We've got a couple new calculations we've created. Now we can bring in our cartogram, our drill down cartogram. And let's go ahead and make this take up 
well, let's make it take up the entirety of the screen this time. And then we can start to bring in our field. So you can see it starts off asking for the location. We have two location fields, one called state and one called county. Now you'll notice nothing actually happens on here until we actually go to the format paintbrush. We'll, we'll go ahead and go there now and show you what we're missing. Right now what we're missing is the shape files because this visual does require that you have a shape file that's entered in for it to be able to present the data on some form of a map. So we're going to go over to the format section. You know what, we need to bring some data, some more data in first before that even lights up. So let's go back over to the field well, and uh, let's bring in the other items that we have here. So the size values, we're going to base the size off of the total number of veterans, and then we're going to base the color values off of the percent of veterans that we have. And now that we've added those new fields, we should see this section here light up, and it does. And then we can start by going underneath the shape section. The shape section is where we can define the shapes that are being used in here. If you watched our previous module, uh, you've learned a lot about this section already, but uh, you have different projections of a map that you can choose from. Uh, we're going to uh, choose the one that's focused on the U.S., and then you can have different levels of shapefiles that you import. So level one being the first level of your location hierarchy here, called state for us, and then level two would be based off the county. So I would want to have likely two different shapefiles I import, and they can be based off of a web link that you have. They can be, uh, that's really the best way to do it. And basically those shape files are JSON files. And you can see these JSON files I have already selected here. I can take these, copy, and paste them in here. And that should give us our first level of map. And then for our second level of mapping, at the county level, I'm going to bring in a county shape file right here. And I'll paste that in. Now you'll also notice these ID locations down here in the bottom. Basically these ID 1, ID 2, ID 3 would give you the ability to map a location to a shapefile. In our case, our shapefile already includes that information. It has the name of the location and then an ID that's associated with it for the map location. If for some reason your shapefile did not have that, you could import and bring in another file that would connect the location in the shapefile to the name that you have in your data set. That's kind of what that's doing there. But again, you have different projections you can choose from here. You can see this one is a little bit offset. You have the Mercator projection, which is including in a space here for the rest of the world. You have all kinds of different ones, but the ones that make most sense here is the one that's focused on the U.S. for the time being. All right, so what else can we do here? Well, there's a couple other things that we can do. First, before we go through all the options we have here, let's walk through really interacting with this map. Because we have this map set up to a point now where we can start to interact with it and use it. And if you look at the field, field well, you'll see there's other items that we could have brought in. We could have brought in a tooltip. We could have added a legend up at the top here to kind of define the different colors that are being used. But in our case, we've kind of got this set up, and we can see where the most veterans are. It looks like California, Texas, and Florida. And you can highlight above that. It gives you the values there. You can see Texas, Florida, and California lit up in green. Well, how did it know to like those up in green and some in red and some in yellow? Well, it did that by looking underneath the format paintbrush underneath the data color section. Under the data color section, it automatically defined the min, the max, and kind of the center value here for our percentages. And based on those selections, it automatically gave us a range across the values that we have. But if we wanted to change that, if we wanted to change the colors, for example, or the ranges, the thresholds that are being used for each, you could certainly come in here and make an adjustment to the data color section to adjust what you're seeing on the map, although I kind of like what we're seeing here. So you have the capability to make those changes. Now, as far as interacting with the map, you can do this a couple ways. You can drill in, for example, let's say instead of looking at all the states, I wanted to see all the counties, I could hit this little option that would let me go down to the next level of the hierarchy, and if I selected that, it would just show me all the counties within the states and the, the, the dots. You'll see little dots here indicating those values for each county. We'll roll that back up. You can also make it so that you actually drill down to a particular state. So this would allow you to actually go down to the first state that's appearing here. In alphabetical order, it would go into Alabama. Or what another option that would be most popular is using this option here where it has the ability to drill down. Now what typically happens when you select a state is it uses it as a filter. So if I were to select this state here, you'll notice it zooms in on that state and any other visuals that I had on the design surface would now be filtered by California. If I were to select this nice little drill button or down, drill down button up in the top right, next time when I select California, instead of filtering everything else by California, it's actually going to drill into California. So if I select California this time, you'll notice it brings up a new map, and I can see all the values for California in here this time shown at a county level. Okay, So that's kind of what the drill options give you the ability, and that's really the key benefit of using these custom visuals is the ability to drill into your different map layers. All right, so let's talk a little bit more, though, about the format section. We talked about the data colors. We talked about the shape section. You also have a default color section. Underneath the default color section, if we make this a little larger, 
You can actually do things like turn the map off altogether, and then it's just showing the dots, which is kind of odd in this case because we don't have that many dots. But if we were to have drilled down to the county level, it probably would make it a little bit easier to uh, see. You can see here, if we drill at the county level, it really almost outlines the whole country here, which is interesting. Uh, but I'm going to leave the map on. You can also change the color of the map here. So if I wanted to, I can make it a yellow map, which is kind of an odd thing to do, but you can certainly do that if you wanted to. You can change the color of the, or the thickness of the border. So if you wanted to, you could increase the border thickness around the state outlines. And you can also change the color of that outline if you wanted to as well. So if I wanted to make it red, for example, you could do that. I'll reset that back to the defaults. Just want to show you that's uh, a capability you have in here. Underneath circle settings, this has some interesting stuff you can do. You can kind of bump up the size of those circles other than the default that was provided. You could give it a little bit of a bump up if you wanted to make it a little easier to read. You can do that. You could also change the thickness around the uh, circle. So if, you, for example, I wanted to make a border around the circles, right now the border is set to zero, but I could bump up a stroke, which is just a border around it, and that makes it where you can see a black border showing up around the circles. And you can change the color of that border here if you wanted to as well. You can also make the circles transparent if you wanted. So if I wanted to, I can change the transparency and bump that up a few percentage points here, maybe a little bit more so you can actually tell. And now you can see that it's actually transparent circles that are showing up here, which is kind of useful if you have multiple circles that are in a tight spot and they might be laying on top of each other, then that transparency might come in handy there. All right, I'll go ahead and leave those turned on and let's go down to zoom. Underneath the zoom options, you see there's an auto zoom option. That auto zoom option is used whenever you have other items that you're using to filter. Say, for example, I had a slicer in here, and I select a state in that slicer, and I want it to auto zoom to that state. I would want to turn that on to make sure it does that auto zooming to other items based on the selections for other visuals I have inside the report. You have a selection zoom. Selection zoom does this. If I were to select the state, it zooms down to the state. If I turn off Selection Zoom, which is turned on by default, you'll notice when I select a state, it doesn't go anywhere. Okay, so that's kind of how that works. Underneath Manual Zoom, this just gives you the ability to use your cursor and kind of scroll, zoom in, and zoom out with your cursor. So the scroll bar on your cursor now, or your mouse uh, can now be used. I'm going to leave that off, though. And then the last property you see here is called Collision. Now, you might have noticed a little bit of kind of bouncing of the dots. Notice up in the top right corner when I turn on options like Zoom In and Zoom Out, you see those guys bouncing together and colliding together? You can turn that off if you don't really like that. You can come down to the bottom here where it says collision and you can turn that off and now they're much more static values. They don't bounce back and forth whenever you turn on or turn off a property. You'll notice they don't actually kind of bounce and have that look and feel we saw a few moments ago. The collision's uh, pretty nice. I'll, I'll go ahead and leave that on. You can see when you turn it back on, it does a little bounce there again. So the only other thing that I've seen some people kind of like to do is whenever you have a lot of data points. So say, for example, you do a drill down here and I drill down to the county level. Okay, so let me go ahead and do that. What some people kind of like to do in some cases is when you have all these different data points showing on a map is they might want to actually reduce the outline that's shown around each county. So this is a property we showed earlier, but underneath the default colors, you can come in here and you can say that I actually want to make the border thickness around the state outlines minimal, and I can kind of bump that down. In this case, I bumped it down to zero. And now you're just seeing the dots, the data points on the, the country without the outline of each county. So that's one thing that I've seen some people kind of find interesting. You can still kind of drill down to certain levels if you wanted to. I can go to a particular county here if I wanted to by selecting the county. It's like I turned off the selection zoom. Let me turn that back on. I'll turn the defaults back on for the zoom. And now whenever I make a selection, it should now go back to zooming in. So you have that capability here. Now you can, there I'm zoomed into uh, New York in this case. You have that capability though. You can kind of zoom in, zoom out. In this case, I've changed the thickness of the outline of the states to be zero or the counties to be zero, so we're not really seeing anything around them. If you, if you prefer to have it back how it was, you can always do revert to default. It sends it right back to how it was. Hope you guys enjoyed this one. It's a good collection of maps that have been added now to the Power BI Custom Visual Gallery or Library, and now you can use those for any kind of mapping capabilities you have. If you have shape files, you can certainly import those shape files to any kind of map that you have and be able to use them on your own. Hope you guys enjoyed this one. Look forward to showing you our next visual in our next custom visual module. Thanks a lot.